Skateboarding is best known for its insane tricks. Whether it's Tony Hawk's iconic 900 or Danny Wei's jump over the Great Wall of China, the tricks that seem to get the most mainstream recognition are mostly the ones that are done on huge ramps built for the sole purpose of skateboarding. And then there is street skating, a much more raw form of skateboarding that doesn't care for the recognition of the mainstream. It's about skating everything that is not designed to be skated, and some individuals push this concept to the extreme. And that is why in this video, I'll be covering some of the craziest street skateboarding tricks ever done. So without taking up any more time, let's just jump right into the video. And remember that these tricks are done by professionals, so do not attempt anything you see in this video. But first, what would you do if you're on your way to the racetrack to see Kyle Busch and you got injured by a distracted driver? Well then, you could call Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm and proud partner of driver Kyle Busch. Kyle is quick just like Morgan & Morgan. And right now, Morgan & Morgan is giving away two tickets to see Kyle Busch race in Las Vegas, plus a $2,000 check. So if you love money and Kyle Busch, you can enter for your chance to win by texting SKATE to For The People. That is 484-373-6753. Or click the first link in the video description down below. Thank you, Morgan & Morgan, for sponsoring this video. Up first is the recent massive Eurogap frontside flip done by Ryan Sheckler. The backstory behind this trick goes much deeper than most skateboarding tricks that I have covered in the past. Pretty much he finds this massive Eurogap, measuring a staggering 17 feet long and roughly 4 to 5 feet tall. The session starts out good, with him quickly landing an ollie over it and then trying some tray flips until he changed his mind to doing a frontside flip. He was getting slammed around a lot, but in street skateboarding this is usual. Then he had one attempt where he almost got it, but it was then that he realized that something was horribly wrong. The whole time that he was attempting the Eurogap, his knee was giving him a lot of pain. He knew that something was wrong, but he really wanted to land that frontside flip. And after jumping down the ledge the last time, he felt that something was terribly wrong with his knee. Turns out this whole time, he was skating with a torn ACL. That whole time that I was trying that thing, it was torn, but we didn't know. I was hoping I could get that trick before I had to like actually go see what was up with my knee. After roughly two years of surgery and recovery, Rhino was able to get back to his spot and attempt the frontside flip that had been on his mind this whole time but he had a lot going against him. First, the spot needed to be patched up and made skatable again. Then, because he was doing it during a heat wave, the concrete was so hot that it became softer, making him slower on the run-up, being able to barely clear the gap. But he didn't let that prevent him from skating it, so he went for it. Getting so close every try, but just barely not being able to land it. After many hours of battling this spot in the intense heat, Ryan was drained and defeated for that day. They wrapped it up, and came back a week later. This time, Ryan was confident they could get it. But the spot had some tricks up its sleeve. The entire time Ryan was attempting this zero gap, he and his friends were using a bungee to get up to speed. The issue is that after so many attempts pulling the bungee back to its maximum stretch capacity, something had to break. And that's exactly what happened. When the bungee was fully stretched out with Ryan about to go for another attempt, the rope snapped, causing the bungee to hit one of Ryan's friends in the stomach. Thankfully, after a few minutes, he got back up and was okay. And they continued trying again, but then the bungee snapped from the other end. And needless to say, after tying a bunch of knots and wrapping it in duct tape, the bungee was sort of good to go. All this commotion caused Ryan to lose focus, and on his next attempt, he had one of his worst slams yet completely losing orientation while he was flying through the air. But thankfully he was okay and continued to try to land the frontside flip. After all the struggle of tearing his ACL, getting the spot skatable, and fixing the bungee, Ryan finally stomped the frontside flip that took him two years and three different days to land. Despite all that struggle, he still made the trick look easy, which really gives you a perspective into what goes into every single skateboarding trick, let alone a whole video part. And the next trick is even more impressive, which is this iconic car wash kickflip done by Milton Martinez. If you were around skateboarding for the past four years, it would be hard for you not to come across this image. It is the most iconic car wash in skateboarding, and Milton arguably did the best trick ever done in it to this day. But it did not come easily, and here's the backstory behind it. Now first off, this spot has a lot of history behind it. 
I won't go into all of it because this isn't a video for the spot, but all you need to know is all the way back in 1996, Mark Gonzalez, one of the best street skateboarders of all time, face planted on it and never came back. Since then, only a handful of people have had the courage to step up to the spot, let alone actually land something down it. While it doesn't look all that crazy on video, the bank is deceivingly steep. Steep enough that you will slip down if you jump onto it. And then the landing is by no means smooth. Anyway, fast forward 20 years to 2016, and you have Dustin Dolan and Martin Martinez both attempting to land a kickflip down the car wash. Both of which got Hall of Meat videos for that, and if you know what Hall of Meat is, then you know that I cannot show it on my channel without the Age Restriction Council banishing my video into the Shadow Realm. So basically, all you need to know is Dustin hit his head and Milton broke his leg pretty bad. Oh, I broke my foot. After Milton recovered, he was not really thinking about going back to the car wash to land that trick. But one day he was driving through LA past the car wash and saw that someone had spray painted the late Jake Phillips name onto the bank. And when he saw that, he knew that he had to try it again. Starting out strong with an ollie, they landed first try. This gave him a boost of confidence to try the kickflip again, but before he was able to do it, he got kicked out and he had to come back another day. Despite the easy ollie, the kickflip would not come nearly as easily. The next time that Milton came back, he landed on his board after doing the kickflip, but he injured his finger when his board slid out from under him at the bottom of the bank where it meets the sidewalk. The reason being is that there was a crack that was messing up the transition. He tried again, but with a bleeding finger and the psychological barrier of the crack, he had to wrap it up for the day. Milton came back a few days later, fixed the crack with Bondo, and brought out a group of friends to support him in landing his trick. But there were still more barriers in his path. The owner of the car wash was starting to notice that people were jumping off the roof of his car wash and decided to call the cops. To avoid them, Milton lied down on the roof and his buddies down below pointed in the opposite direction to deter the cops. With the memory of slipping out and breaking his legs still fresh on his mind, Milton was having a hard time committing to landing on his board after doing the kickflip. But after narrowly avoiding the cops, he knew that it was now or never, and he committed to landing on his board no matter what. He landed the first time and slid out, but he was good and now full of excitement knowing that today would be the day that he finally landed his trick. And on his next try, he did just that, rolling away with a completely euphoric look on his face, making the trick look easy despite the battle that it took to land it. Rightfully so, this trick would land Milton Martinez a lot of recognition with him winning 2019 Trick of the Year, as well as Skater of the Year, and on top of all of that, also a Thrasher cover. Much deserved in my opinion. After Milton got all those awards, the car wash spot would get very popular and would get visited by a lot of skaters who tried to land their own trick down it. Most notably, Alex Midler landed an insane back 360. In my opinion, this trick is more impressive than Milton's kickflip, but there is far less backstory behind it. So leave the debate up to you guys in the comments about whose trick is actually better. And up next is Ryan DeCenzo's crazy double set kickflip. Before I get into what Ryan did, I do have to give some context on the history of the spot. Basically, Andrew Reynolds, one of the best street skateboarders of all time, was the first person to try to ollie down it, ending up with him cracking his head. Jamie Thomas, also one of the best skaters of all time, tried to land an ollie there and blew out his knee. And then, a few years later, Diego Bucciarini finally got the ollie in 1999. Since then, no one has dared to land a trick on that spot again. That was until Jake Phelps remembered the spot and called up Ryan DeCenzo to go kickflip it. When they pulled up to the spot, the original stairs were unskatable because the concrete below was getting torn up. But right across from it was another set of a 9 flat 9. For those of you that don't skate, that means that there's a 9 stair drop to a flat and then back to another 9 stair drop. They put down some bondo in the cracks and Ryan sent it. Right away with his first try, catching what seemed to be like the perfect kickflip, only to have his legs buckle underneath him with the force of the impact. And then the battle began. With Jake Phelps encouraging him down below, Ryan kept going attempt after attempt, with each one getting further from perfection of the first one that he did, ultimately ending with him bruising his heel and having to leave defeated that day. He came back a few weeks later, and this time the original stair set was skatable. He decided to warm up with the 180s, but on his second attempt, he broke his board. He grabbed another board and decided to just go for the kickflip. And right away, on one of his first attempts, he nearly landed on the rail. It was a good catch, everything was going good. And I'm coming down and I almost land on the rail. We're so close to 
to that rail. Like, I can't land on the rail, I'll die. And I'm starting to think, oh my God, I'm gonna be going home in crutches for sure. But Jake's encouragement kept him going, and he continued to battle with the spot, with every attempt getting closer to landing it, until he absolutely stomped it out of nowhere, riding away in astonishment that he actually landed that trick. And I just stood up all the way, and it was just like, it just happened. I just did one of the best tricks that I'll ever do in, in skating. Up next, I have some honorable mentions because I've already covered so many of the best skateboarding tricks in my previous videos, and I don't want to repeat them, and also because this video could be hours long if I covered all of them in just one video. The UC Davis Tray Flip by Chris Jocelyn. The Municipal Death Rail by Dane Berman. The Mutant Kinked Rail by Chase Webb. The Kinker by Henry Gartland. The Water Tower Gap by Jeremy Ray. The Water Tower Board Slide by Clive Dixon. The Leon 25 by Aaron Jaws Hamoki. The Miami Leap of Faith by Jace DeTomasio. If you guys want to see me break down these tricks, check out my craziest tricks playlist at the end of this video. And I'm sure that I missed a few, so let me know in the comments what tricks I should cover in future videos. And for the final trick is Kyle Walker's Quad Set Rail. This is without a doubt the biggest kinked rail ever done, grinding a total of 32 stairs and roughly 70 to 80 feet. Unfortunately, I could not find any footage of the attempts, but here's what Kyle Walker said in an interview one year after landing that trick. Um, it wasn't like four full whole days, but it was like hour and a half kick out. Next day, 45 kick out. Next day, hour and a half hours kick out the four time I think it was fifth or sixth try or something you know seeing the clip now I feel like I couldn't go there and be like, well I'm gonna do this you know things like that just happen like like naturally you know this trick would land him skater of the year and to this day is still regarded as one of the craziest street tricks ever done his part that this trick was an ender for is filled with tricks that would be a dream ender for most skaters making his part no other way an instant classic and one of the best street skateboarding parts of all time. I strongly recommend that you watch the full original videos for all the tricks that I featured today. The links for them are in the description down below. If you made it this far, you should check out my crazy skateboarding tricks playlist for more videos like this. And as for now, that's all I have. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.